Yeah. If you're speaking to a woman right now, because someone's mm-hmm. going through a divorce right now, yeah. and she's sitting on the edge of her bed, it's 2 o'clock, it's a Saturday, and she knows she needs to be getting up. Cause they, I, I told people, I told the older lady this one time. I said, sweetie, I said, I can't do your drama. Do you understand how some mornings I can't even get up out of my bed? Where I'm sitting there, just sitting there looking like, how am I supposed to go to work today? I need this paycheck, but how am I supposed to move forward? And then she's like, well, what are you trying to say? What I just said. I don't even want to take a shower today. Don't y'all can judge me in the comments later. But it was times where it was just like, I can't. I don't have nothing for y'all today. So that means you have to fill your tank. So you're looking uh-huh. for, yeah, like, so how do you fill your spirit? Well, I, I don't know if the person's a Christian. For me, it's always God and family. But what does that person like? Other people, you know, they might be Buddhist. They might need meditation, yoga. Other things might just work for them. But you need something. You can't run on empty, particularly if you're going through something like that, I would say definitely don't do it on your own. Yeah. Family, God, friends, somebody there to kind of prop you up and get you through it, particularly if it's something that's painful for you, like you were saying, like it gets to a point where you didn't even feel like getting out of bed. You need a support system. And it's not, it's sometimes we feel bad asking for help. I'm included, but ask for help. Sometimes it's difficult and it's uncomfortable, but reach out and ask for help. Because there's somebody close to you that you could ask for help. Sometimes you just want to appear that, you know, that thing about being strong. Like I hate, okay, so I hate and I like it at the same time. That term, the strong black woman, I hate it because then you're saying that I don't need help. And then I'll just continue to wear that. That means I should continue to suffer in silence. So reach out for help, get something. Counseling is a great thing, but if you can't afford it, then it's family. And of course, church is always there. You need support. Someone will get you through it. And, and the truth is, just to tell you, it's like, it will get better in the morning. There's something I used to tell myself when I was in med school was um, there's some days like I felt like I couldn't do it anymore because, of course, I had two kids that were singles by myself. But what I would end up doing would be right after class, once I got home, make sure the kids had eaten. I'd sit down and watch a show for about an hour, hour and a half, maybe two, like totally just disconnect and then go to sleep and wake up in the next morning ready to start it all over again. The morning was always a new opportunity to start again for a fresh start. So that's what it is. It's like one day may not be great, but just go to sleep. And then the next day is another opportunity to start all over again for a better day. So if I could just piggyback off of what Lola said, because like I said, a lot of times people are embarrassed. That's why they're sitting on the edge of that bed, because you don't feel like you can trust people. Because like a lot of people, we wait for your downfall. And I'm it's sad to say, but some people be like, oh, yeah, Kalita, they getting a divorce. Oh, Indigo, wow. Well, you know, and you be like, okay, why is this like TMZ? This is not even TMZ worthy. So, you know, you have to have that support system that you can trust. Like they're not waiting to get off the phone with you and tell the next person, you know, what's going on in a negative light, and then you really feel in some type of way. So just get a support system that you know that's solid. Like, you know, Lola said her and her pastor, he saw her. So find that, you know, person that you can really, like, you know, cl- you know, get close to. It might be an older person. It might be that old lady down the street. You never know who, you know, is going to be there for you. Anyone else have advice for that woman that's going through it right now? Woman, man, whoever is going through this, this side of, of breakup, um, first piece of advice is don't try to force yourself to get better. Like, just feel it. Be in it. It's okay. You don't want to clean your ass. That's okay. Just don't do it. You ain't got to. You don't have to do anything for anyone because this is your relationship. This is your healing. This is your processing. So just be in it and it's okay. Like, you're not expected to have a mask on for anybody else. Be authentic to what's happening within your body, what's happening in your mind. So that way you know how to properly address it. Because if you cover it up with anything else, you're just prolonging and delaying your ability to overcome it. And the other thing is, you know, put more time, effort, and emphasis into into becoming the person that your partner wasn't able to, to fulfill for you. So if it was a financial need, maybe you guys were beefing over finances, then you know what? You create the plan to become more financially stable. If they weren't giving you the love and intimacy, then you need to find a way to date yourself, to love and appreciate yourself. You become those things because no one should complete you. You need to be whole and healthy on your own. So that way, when you get into the next relationship, if that's something you decide to do, you're both whole together. And that's so much better. Y'all are speaking a mouthful because when you say like, you know, you got to give your time, yourself time. Because a lot of times people be like, you're not over it yet. And then you're rushing and then you have that breakdown because you're not healed. You just, you, oh, I'm just going to jump back in. I don't feel anything. It's going to hit you when you don't least expect or when you don't want it to. 
Um, Kalita, do you have any advice for someone out there that's going through it right now? Yeah, it's okay to be. Uh, it's okay to be sad. It's okay to grieve it. That's it. That's really mm-hmm. it. Once, because because it was it's something that you thought was forever, and it, you got you were disappointed, you were hurt. You have to grieve it, and then eat, just don't try to take it beyond where you can take it. A day, an hour, thirty minutes, and once once get it all out, and then you know do nice things for yourself. And mine was kind of simple. Like I said, once I decided to, you know, jump in the shower and say, hold on, wait a minute, you got life all messed up. <laughs> um, what was cool for me was I found shows that I liked. Um, you know, it was some corny shows that I would be at the house just laughing. So I know, you know, we canceled Seventh Heaven, but Seventh Heaven was one of the ones that I was watching. <laughs> you know, That's they don't even play it on TV no more. It's gone because, you know, what he did. Um, but I... That show, because the little kids were just so hilarious on the show, so I would sit there and watch it. So find something that makes you happy that when you had that downtime, that you're just not sitting there with your thoughts, you know, the negative thoughts. Like you said, you you know, some women out there be like, well, let me go burn the house down. You're doing stuff that you don't want to recommend. They, they don't know that you're laughing, but there's women that have too much on the line and get crazy because he, somebody said he's with Simone at the restaurant and you come there and lose your mind. No, I just really like found the things that made me happy, like music that made me happy, music that sings to me. Like I literally be having concerts in my house. So find the things that make you happy, the things that bring you joy. Surround yourself with the positive people. That's in real life. You know, when you got those negative people, those people will bring you down. So stay around the people that, you know, bring joy, you know, come over. Let's watch this movie. Can I add something? Uh, I think we really need to get rid of this illusion that it's going to be forever because I think that might be something that some people are going into relationships thinking that it's going to be forever. But we're not even at jobs forever. At some point, wherever you are, if you work in some place and you realize like this is about as high I can go here, like it's not really fulfilling my, my skills or my talents and I know I can grow someplace else and this no longer fits me, we're okay with leaving a job. I think the same thing goes for a marriage. If you are not thriving in your marriage and you feel like you're just surviving or it, in any kind of relationship, like really be okay with realizing that it might just be for a season. That relationship is just for a season. It may not be forever because the forever concept is an ideal that we all try to strive for. But an ideal is still an idea, and it doesn't mean that it's reality. And I get that, because I uh, actually, the husband, you know, said, he said <laughs> that's his name, whoever's laughing, the indigo's laughing. So with that being said, you know, sometimes we have expectations, and our expectations on other folks, that's when we end up being disappointed, because you expected certain things, and you just don't get them, and you're like, okay, now I'm sad, I'm depressed. So yeah, I get that. Like, so a lot of us, like I said, you know, divorce is not an option, and then you're basically dying. You're dying a slow death. 